Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you an overview over these typical observables we have in Android, like live data, state flow, normal flow, shared flow, composed state, because all these are quite similar, but they differ in some minor aspects. And I want to show you in this video, and I want to give you more clarity over this topic, how you actually can use these in your project, and especially for which scenarios you should use which. So by making sure that you watch this till the end, you also make sure that you actually won't have many more questions around this topic and you actually know when to use these things. As you can see, I created a little demo app here to actually show you the differences. Right now this app doesn't do anything, I just have some initial setup. Just to show you, we just have uh, four different of these observables here. Live data, state flow, normal flow, and shared flow. And there's also compose state, which I can't use here because it's an XML project. It's just better to demonstrate this in an XML project. But most of these also can be used in compose projects. So all that happens here is, or that I want to happen, when we click these buttons, then right now nothing happens. But we actually make a call to our view model that uh, triggers, in this case, a live data that should change the value of this text. Here we trigger a state flow that uh, changes the value of this text, your normal flow, and a shared flow. So just that I can show you the differences of these different uh, observables. But right now we don't observe anything here, so nothing in our UI changes. I just implemented these, fu these functions here to trigger the view model functions, which you can see here. So let's actually go through this step by step. I will show you how you can observe these values, how you can create these objects, starting with the live data actually. I think live data will be the most well-known observable pattern here that we have on this list because it's just the oldest. It belongs to the Android Jetpack components and is actually also the only one that works on Java here. So in Java projects you have to use that. Um, I hope you don't use Java anymore for Android, but if you do, you have to use live data. So what does it do? Live data is a so-called state holder. So it holds our UI state in the end. If, if any value in your UI changes over time, then that change, so for example, the new string that should be reflected here in our UI, that needs to be stored somehow because otherwise it will be lost on screen rotations. And that's what live data does. So you can put the state in live data and when the, the activity rotates, all the observers will automatically be notified about the current value. So you can see when we trigger live data here, we just change the value to live data. Let's see how that works when we want to observe that in main activity. Here in subscribe to observables. It's important to mention that live data is actually lifecycle aware. So it will only fire off the, the new value or the, the current value if the corresponding lifecycle is actually in a state where it should receive these, um, where it should receive the, that data like if it's if the activity is in the foreground basically so we want to say view model live data and we say observe so that will now be called whenever there there is a change on the live data value we need to pass a life cycle owner here we just pass this because it's the activity if you have that in a fragment you use view life cycle owner instead but since we don't have that we pass this and then in here you can see we get a string, which is the new value of that live data. We can just say we use our binding, our text view live data, and we set the text to whatever we got from the live data. If we then relaunch our app to show you a little demo of how that works, then you can see if we now click on a live data here, then we will trigger the event in our view model here. We will assign a new value to our live data, which is this. So this live data now holds live data as a string and not hello world anymore. This, because we made the change, will then trigger the observer here, this block, and we change the text to whatever is in the live data. And the thing about live data is now if we rotate our device, it will automatically fire off again. So you can see it keeps the value and the text won't be hello world again. So far so good. Let's get to state flow and how it compares to live data. A state flow, as the name already suggests, also holds state, as well as live data. So it's also just a state holder class. However, it's a little bit different than live data. State flow, as the name also says, is, is a flow. So if you know um, Kotlin flows, I will get more into this in this video here, um, then 
A flow is basically comparable to live data, but it can actually do a little bit more. So in regards to state flow, this is very similar to live data. I will get to the other flows here in a moment. But the state flow is the most comparable one to live data because it's used to also store state. And it is basically a flow. So we have the flow benefits, which I will get to in a moment. You can see we can we can change the state flow value exactly the same way as here for live data. And then to actually be able to observe from that, we actually need to do that in a coroutine because a, a flow is uh, based on the coroutine framework in Kotlin. So we need to launch a coroutine here in lifecycle scope, which is um, lifecycle scope launch when started. Always use launch when started here. Never use launch to collect from a state flow. And here we say view model state flow collect latest and that's basically now the equivalent to this so this will now be fired off every time the state flow value changes so in here we can say binding tv state flow that text is equal to it and if we relaunch this you will see it will have the exact same behavior as our live data here so there we go you can see if we click live data and state flow both these values change and if we rotate the, the screen then both these values here will actually stay in in the corresponding text views so the state is just kept which is exactly the job of a state holder class so which of these two should you actually now use so in the end they do the same thing so which should you actually use in your project i personally recommend not using live data anymore because it's just kind of obsolete and the flow the, the state flow version just can do a little bit more with state flow we have all these uh, powerful flow operators which you might know you can map the results easily you can uh, filter them and also flows are much easier testable actually than live data because they use coroutines um, the, the testing capabilities for coroutines are great because you can test time in the end very easily because for test cases the the lay of coroutines are just skipped so yeah personally i always use state flow in my projects assuming it's not a composed project just a normal xml one um, then i always use state flow it's just better than live data get used to it it's, it's great something that's also worth mentioning here is that there are hot flows and there are cold flows state flow is a so-called hot flow and that means that it will it will keep emitting values even if there are no collectors. A cold flow would mean um, it, it would not emit anything if there is no collector. So you can see this would be a collector here. And even if we wouldn't have that, and we change um, the value here of state flow in our view model, the state, flow, the state flow would still emit something even though there is nobody to collect that. So that's just worth mentioning here because we will also get to some cold flows in this video. So the next observable here that I want to show you is just a normal flow. You can see I don't have that here in the view model really, uh, I mean not as a variable. Instead we have this function trigger flow which returns a flow and we have to do it like that because that is how normal flows work. We have to construct these flows with this flow builder here and then inside of this flow builder we have a coroutine scope in which you can execute suspend functions as you can see. And with this emit function, we can say, now I want to emit a value and trigger our observers. So the normal flow doesn't work like state flow in the way that we can say flow.value is something because it doesn't hold a value. Instead, it just does something. And while it's doing something, it can emit different values over a period of time. So all that flow does here is it repeats the block here five times. It will emit a string that gives us the, the current iteration delays the flow for a second and then just does that five times basically leading to five emissions in total and after that it will just be cancelled or will just quit. So we can actually subscribe to that the same way we do for state flow because both are flows. We don't do that here in subscribe to observables because we want to trigger that when we actually click on the button. So here that now returns that flow and we can say that collect latest which will also give us these strings. Don't forget to do that in lifecycle scope. Dot launch. Um, here we can actually use launch because it it's not a state flow. Mm, and here 
we simply want to say binding TV flow text is it. If we now relaunch this, then you will see how that now works. So while these two here were state holder flows or live data, the flow one, the normal flow, will now work a little differently. So if we click that, you can see we get the emission 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and after that the value will just stay in the text view because the flow actually finished with its five um, repetitions. However, if we now rotate the device, you see live data and state flow stays there, but the flow one actually changes back to hello world because the normal flow does not contain a state. So it, it doesn't just fire off something again when the activity is actually recreated. Instead, it's, it's more like a one-time thing. So when we trigger the flow, we can do that again, then it will just create that new flow and emit these values over time. And when it's done, it's done. Then, then the flow is done. <laughs> Last but not least, let's get to shared flow. And actually compose state that's a little bit differently than all of these. Um, but shared flow is actually also flow. Surprise, surprise. And you can see we can construct it uh, in a similar way than we can uh, state flow. We don't provide an initial value here because a shared flow, um, just as a normal flow, does not keep a value in itself. It's the same as a state flow in the sense of that it's also a hot flow. So, so shared flow and state flow are both hot flows. So they will send out events e or, or they will send out new data or events even if there are no collectors. But what is the difference now? Well, a shared flow is more used to, to send one-time events because yeah, let's take the, the typical example in Android of showing a toast or a snack bar. Let's say you would actually trigger a state flow when you actually want to show a snack bar. That would mean that here where we actually observe that we can actually do that to, to demonstrate that. I think that it, that makes it clearer. Let's say here we want to show snack bar. Mm, snack bar dot make. We can say binding dot root and we can say it snack bar length long and show. So whenever the, the state flow triggers, we want to show snack bar. And let's say we, we get some kind of event in the view model. Let's say we get an API response that was an error and we now want to show that error in our UI. So what we do is in the view model, when we know there is an error, we say our state flow value is that error or whatever. And if we now relaunch that and take a look, then if we now click state flow, you can see we just get a snack bar with a state flow. If we do that again, we don't get it because uh, it actually keeps a value and it won't emit the same value again. However, if we now rotate the device, you can see the snack bar shows up again because that's the behavior of state flow. It will automatically emit the value when the activity is actually recreated. And that's usually not what you want with snack bars. So they should actually just show up once and that's it. Even if there are screen rotations in the future, you don't want to show that error snack bar over and over again. And that is now where a shared flow comes into play because it just sends out a one-time event that isn't re-emitted on screen rotation. So if you take a look, we can uh, trigger the shared flow by using a curtain here and just calling emit. So it's similar to a normal flow, just that we can call this emit function outside of the flow kind of. So we don't need this flow builder where we construct how the flow works once and then it just works that way. Instead, we can just say somewhere in our view model, we now want to send an event into this flow. And then let's actually go back to main activity. And I'll just change this to shared flow here for convenience. Because I think state flow should be pretty clear now. Relaunching this. And if we now click on shared flow, you can see we see a snack bar. If we rotate this, we don't see a snack bar, but we can still click here to see another one and another one and so on. So it's just used to send out one-time events when a specific user action happens or when you get an API response, something like that. It's also very helpful, for example, if you do something in your view model and validate something and based on this validation, you might want to navigate to a different screen. So then you can say from the view model, if the validation or whatever is successful, you just emit an event. You can create some kind of event class here that says navigate and you could even pass a route where you want to navigate and then here in your activity or fragment when you receive that navigation event 
you know, okay, now the view model actually sent me that event and I should now use my nav controller to navigate to that corresponding page. So while the normal flow is more, more used to, yeah, if you have some kind of logic that, yeah, emits multiple values over a period of time. So I would say a flow is just a coroutine that can emit multiple values. While a coroutine, just a normal suspend function, can only return a single function when it's done, a flow can emit these values, so it doesn't need to say return that value, it can say emit, it can use suspend functions to delay these emissions to send these at different times. So if you need that behavior, use a normal flow. And if you need these, this behavior to send events from somewhere in your view model to your UI, then you want to use a shared flow. So something I used a normal flow for was, for example, a timer. So you could say repeat for, let's say, 60 seconds. You delay that for a second. And every second you just make an emission. You can collect that emission in your UI and you can actually display that. So that would already be a very simple 60 second timer here where you say um, we just emit it. Maybe it plus one here because it starts at, at zero would then be a flow of integers but that would be that would basically start the flow it would emit the the corresponding second every second and then you can observe on that in your UI and you already have a working timer so that's what the normal flow is really cool for and then lastly I want to talk a little bit about the compose state because it kind of belongs in this list here um, but it's it's not really the same as a flow or a live data. It is the same in the sense that it's also a state holder class. It's just called state in Compose. Um, but it works quite differently because in Compose we have to use that. So we are forced to use it. Or if you use a state flow, then there is a function to actually call, I think it's collect as Compose state or so, to convert that to Compose state. But in the end, in your UI, you have to use these uh, compose states. The reason for that is that the compose framework is built in a way that whenever these compose states change, the, the composables that are affected by this change will actually recompose and will be redrawn so that the actual change is reflected in your UI. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is whenever you use Jetpack Compose, you want to use the compose state. If you use XML, then I suggest using all these flow versions here of these observables so so don't use live data anymore use a state flow if you want to save state use a shared flow if you want to send events to your ui and use a normal flow if you just have some logic and you want to emit multiple values over a period of time so i hope this video was helpful for you and it actually helped you to understand these concepts and also the differences between these if so, then you will definitely also love my free email newsletter in which I regularly talk about Android architecture, about Kotlin, Android advice. So feel free to click the link down below and subscribe for that email newsletter for free. Thanks again and have an amazing day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.